Hi, in this video we are going to discuss about the hematology experiment packed cell volume or hematocrit. So what is the aim of this experiment? So by this experiment we intend to determine the packed cell volume of a given sample of blood. So to do the experiment we should first know what packed cell volume is right. So the definition of packed cell volume is it is a proportion of the volume of blood sample that is occupied by red cells and it is expressed as a percentage of whole blood. So see if uh, this if we are taking say about 1 ml of blood we are going to see how much volume is occupied by the red blood, red blood cells. Okay. So the normal values in male is 47 plus or, plus or minus 7 percentage and in females it is 42 plus or minus 7 percentage. Right. So now we will see the different apparatus which is needed for this experiment. So first and foremost we need the Wintrop's hematocrit tube. So as you can see it is a tube which is around 11 centimeters long. It's a thick tube and it has got two sets of markings. One is given in white and other is given in red. If you can see, you can see that the markings for the markings in the red 10 is on the bottom and 0 is on the top whereas for the white 10 is on the top and 0 is on the bottom. It's a thick tube which is open on one end and closed on the other. Okay. So why do we have two sets of readings, red and white? We'll uh, see about it later in this video. Okay. The next important apparatus that we need is the pasture pipette. So it uh, the pipette consists of a long nozzle which con contains a rubber teat at this end and it is used to fill the Wintrobe's tube with oxalated blood. Okay. And finally, we need a blood sample. So ideally, the blood sample that we use should be anticoagulated, right? So the anticoagulant which is used for uh, PCV or hematocrit experiments contains ammonium oxalate and potassium oxalate in the ratio 3 is to 2. So why do we need two oxalates for this experiment? See, ammonium oxalate will actually swell up the RBCs whereas the potassium oxalate will shrink up the RBCs. So we are taking ammonium oxalate and potassium oxalate in the ratio 3 is to 2 so that the morphology of the RBC is not uh, changed. Okay, Which, because it's very important as we are measuring the RBC volume here, right? So that is the ideal anticoagulant to be used. But the blood that we use here in our labs is received from a blood bank. So what will be the uh, anticoagulant used there? Most probably it will be. So now we'll see the procedure. So to do this experiment, we have to first take anticoagulated blood in the pasture pipette without any air bubble and then we introduce the tip of the polythene tube into the hematocrit tube until it reaches the bottom and then we slowly fill the tube without any air bubbles up to the zero mark which is present on the tube. So that is how we fill the hematocrit tube. Okay, so once we fill it, as you can see, it will be something like this. So we have to wipe off any blood which is sticking onto the sides of the tube and then we have to plug it with a cotton so that so as to prevent evaporation. See, so this is how you plug the Wintrobe's tube. You can see that the blood is filled up to the zero mark and there is no blood sticking onto the sides. Okay. Right, and then we centrifuge it for 30 minutes at the speed of 3000 revolutions per minute so that the RBCs will settle down by this due to the centrifugation. So once we centrifuge, this is the result that we got. So here you can see that we've got a clear plasma which is straw colored on the top and then we've got this uh, red blood cell column on the bottom. Okay, and in between though it is not clearly visible here, you can see that there's a small grayish white layer. Okay, which is called the Buffy coat, which is around 0.5 to 1 millimeter in thickness. Okay, so the observation is the red cells are seen packed at the bottom and the straw colored plasma is seen above and in between there is a grayish white layer which contains WBCs and platelets and this is the Buffy coat, which is around 0.5 to 1 millimeter in thickness. Okay, so this is another uh, picture showing the different layers. So here you can see that this is the plasma layer. And here we've got the packed RBCs, which is a hematocrit. And then we've got the small buffy coat layer, which contains WBC and platelets. Right? So now we'll move on to the different questions that can be asked regarding this PCV or hematocrit. 
So the first important question is what are the uses of a Winthrop's hematocrit tube? So obviously we, we can say that one of the important uses is to measure the packed cell volume. And the other use is to measure the erythrocyte sedimentation rate. Remember in our Winthrop's tube we had markings on two, two directions, right? In one the 10 was on the bottom and 0 was on the top and in the other 10 was on the top and the 0 was on the bottom. See we use this scale to measure the packed cell volume and we use this scale where 0 is on the top to measure the ESR. That is why the Winthrop's tube has got two different sets of readings. Okay. Next question is what are the sources of error in measurement and interpretation of PCV? So the first and most important error is that the pipette or the Winthrop's tube should be adequately dry. Otherwise, if it is wet, there can be hemolysis of the RBC which will lead to faulty results. Okay. Another important uh, problem is improper mixing of the blood. The blood and the anticoagulant should be properly mixed and only then it should be loaded onto the tube. Improper anticoagulant and improper concentration of the anticoagulant. As I said before, we have to use an anticoagulant which contains ammonium oxalate and potassium oxalate in the ratio 3 is to 2. If this ratio is disturbed, the RBC morphology will be interrupted. So, we don't want that to happen. So, there should be proper concentration as well as proper anticoagulant should be used. Next, inadequate centrifugation. We said that it should be cent centrifuged at 3000 RPM for 30 minutes. So, this is required for the RBC to settle down. So, an inadequate centrifugation will lead to faulty results. And finally, the hematocrit the, uh, should not be read along with the Buffy code. See, Buffy code contains WBCs and platelets. So, the hematocrit value should be read only up to the red cell column. Okay. So, that those are the sources of errors. Next question is, why is PCV increased in venous blood? So, we know that venous blood carries blood that comes from the tissues to the lungs. Okay. So, at the tissue level, when one molecule of carbon dioxide is added to the blood, okay, so what happens is due to chloride shift, there will be entry of chloride ion also into the RBC, which is an osmotically active particle. So, the red cells take up water and will increase in size. So, that is why venous blood, uh, because the red cell volume is being increased, the venous blood will have a high, higher hematocrit when compared to the arterial blood. Now, the next question is why sodium citrate not used as an anticoagulant PCV? So, uh, actually where is sodium citrate used? Sodium citrate is an anticoagulant which is used for the experiment ESR. So, why is it not used in PCV? See, the main problem is sodium citrate is a liquid anticoagulant. So, it will cause dilution of the blood because here we are using only 1 ml of blood in the Winthrop's tube. So, into that if you are going to add a liquid anticoagulant, there is going to be hemodilution. So, we are not using sodium citrate as an anticoagulant. We are using uh, anticoagulant which is in powder form, that is oxalate. Now, is PCV a reliable index of hydration status of an individual? See, we know that PCV or packed cell volume is a relative proportion, okay, proportion between the volume which is occupied by the red cells and the in the whole blood, which is expressed as a percentage, okay. So, you can see that the PCV value depends both on the RBC or the red cell column as well as the plasma column. So, what will happen if there is dehydration? Obviously, there is decrease in plasma. So, so the PCV will tend to increase. And uh, similarly, what, what if there is hemodilution? The plasma level will increase and so the PCV will tend to decrease. Okay. So, you can say that it is indicative. So, if, the, if there is a change in the hydration status, it can be indicated. The change will be there in the PCV. But it cannot be taken as a reliable index because we don't know if the red cell uh, volume is constant. Okay. So, so, though it can be indicative of the hydration status, it cannot be taken as a reliable index. We just can't say that uh, if the PCV is more, the person is de uh, dehydrated or the per if the PCV is less, the person is not dehydrated. Okay. Next question is, what is microhematocrit? So, microhematocrit is a method in which the anticoagulated blood is centrifuged in a sealed capillary tube. So, here in microhematocrit, we are using a capillary tube and uh, we are then uh, centrifuging it at a very high speed of around 12,000 RPM for 5 minutes. 
okay so this is the capillary tube that we use and this is a reader which is used to uh, find out the pack cell volume value okay so what are the advantages of microhematocrit see it requires very small blood so it can be taken in pediatric patients as well as patients suffering from hemoconcentration and it is not a time consuming and can be used for mass surveys because large specimens can be used similarly capillary tubes are very easy to fill and they are cheap so these are the advantages of a microhematocrit method so i hope this experiment is clear for you and you know uh, the procedure as well as the questions that can be asked thank you